Well, Mark, thank you. The Bronfman Philanthropies did not invest with Madoff, but still cut grant making by 35% this year to about $11 million. Joining us now is Charles Bronfman, chairman of the Andrea and Charles Bronfman Philanthropies and co author of a new book called The Art of Giving, Where the Soul Meets a Business Plan. Welcome to you, Mr. Bronfman. Thank you. Good to be here. So let me ask you first off, now that the global economy is in recovery mode, do you expect to be able to increase funds to your philanthropy? We'll do our best, but uh, we have a bit of a problem that others don't. Uh, we're a spend down philanthropy, so we had always uh, intended to close at the end of 2016. And if you're doing that, that means you rely on a balance of income and capital. When all of a sudden the income stopped uh, over a year ago, that meant that we had to dig more into capital. So we'll have to adjust ourselves as best we can, and the closing date will remain. I will stay in philanthropy, but the actual philanthropies will, will end. What can you do to increase the income? I guess what be smarter. <laughs> well, you know, we have, like anybody else, you have commitments, and you must honor those commitments. So you do what you can. Uh, what is your view right now of the global economy? Just give me a sense of, you know, you have your finger on the well, pulse. Seem, there seem to be two different worlds. There's uh, the stock market and there's the unemployment. And, you know, we still walk down the streets in New York City, and I'm sure that's uh, compounded elsewhere. And there are all these store closings. <clears throat> and you say to yourself, what's going on? Yeah, that how, is a great How come the market's going up and there are all these people out of work? And I just feel so terrible for them. You wrote this book, The Art of Giving, Where the Soul Meets a Business Plan. What was your motivation? Who did you write it for? We wrote it for uh, institutional investors. We invoted, wrote it for investment advisors. We wrote it for people, ordinary people, because 75% of uh, all philanthropy is done by people, people, uh, not institutions. We wrote it for the uh, grantees, those in institutions that are having a problem trying to understand the new generations. So we wrote it for a lot, a lot of people. And, and we wrote it for those who might give $5,000 or those who might give $5 million. And the idea is focus. In the book, you suggest that sometimes philanthropists give without understanding their motivations, which can lead to ineffective giving. So to avoid this, you right. suggest asking yourself critical questions. And one that struck out to me, stuck out to me rather was, didn't strike out. Uh, who are my heroes and what would they say about my philanthropy? So how would you answer that question? Well, my heroes in no particular order <coughs> are my late father, Moses and Winston Churchill. Moses and Winston Churchill, that's quite a broad spectrum there. <laughs> Um, all right, so if someone, again, is interested in becoming more charitable, you said that this is for everybody. So what's the difference between somebody with deep pockets and somebody that only has a couple of bucks to give? Everybody has a budget. Everybody is asked for money. Everybody has in their soul something that they want to do. So Jeff Solomon and I, uh, who wrote the, the Art of Giving together, said, well, why don't we just bring the real world and today's world together and discuss the heart, the mind, and how they get together in order to make focused philanthropy more effective and more easily done. Your foundation, important to note, not hit by the Madoff crisis, yet you've been instrumental in, hitting, in helping specifically a lot of the Jewish charities that were, you've teamed up with the Jewish Funders Network, from what I understand. What exactly yes. has been your role there? Well, what we did was we teamed up with the Jewish Funders Network, as you said, and a couple of other um, um, foundations and formed a fund to help protect those who were in trouble. We couldn't help those who had gone under. But uh, to get them through this period and hope that they would stay uh, whole. And that has happened in the majority of cases. How much have you helped to raise to help these charities well, that have lost was, so much with Madoff? It was really only several million dollars, but <clears throat> I think the most anybody got was a half a million. So it wasn't big money but it was just enough to tide them over. Sure, sure. Um, you and the investor Michael Steinhardt co-founded Birthright Israel, a hugely popular program, provides young people the opportunity to go to Israel. How is the funding for that going, and is it secure for, say, the next generation? I think that Birthright will last forever. I really do. I think uh, Michael and I were so fortunate. We got a bunch of people to back us. We got the Israel government to back us. We've had the institutions in the United States and elsewhere to back us. We've taken participants from 51 countries to Israel, and it just works. So we think, and I, I am uh, happy to think, that this will become a rite of passage in the Jewish world, just as a bar bat mitzvah is. What is the significance of this type of philanthropy versus those who choose to donate to schools or to help building? Is there some sort of advantage here to this type? Or why did you choose, rather, to go this route versus trying to 
put your name on buildings. <laughs> I don't like my name on buildings. You put a name on a building, you own it after a while. So yeah, then have to worry about the repairs at every. Uh, but seriously, in this kind of philanthropy, uh, it's very personal. So when I go uh, on a trip and I'm going uh, at the end of December with 400 participants, mm -hmm. you meet them. Sure. You get on the buses. You talk with them. Uh, you get letters. You find out how this trip, amazingly enough, in 10 days, changes their lives. All right. That's fascinating. Mr. Bronfman, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Laurie. Charles Bronfman, our guest this afternoon.